here we are at Goat Board, the good ship Thunder Rumble. And there's a couple of wind turbines over in the distance there, I don't know if you can see them, the window's popping up. This is Birkenhead where we've stopped at. It's actually the Larson Viking we're on. And uh, just pulled into the dock so the engines are idling. The car ramps are open now and uh, we'll be off on our way. Right, now here's an interesting thought. Recently, somebody wrote in a newspaper that the imperceptibly small vibration from wind turbines that escape across the landscape could cause something called visceral vibration damage. It came up with some really weird name for the really quite frankly bizarre idea that wind turbines can somehow create low level vibrations that are injurious to people. I'm now on a ferry. A boat, like literally countless thousands that have been thundering up and down our waterways for centuries nearly, certainly decades, and the noise from the engines, thump, 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 thump. That boat there is very similar to this one. We're on the Norfolk Line boat, not entirely unlike that one there. And as you can probably hear by the engines, we're thumping away like a good one. And uh, given that we're approaching port, the pilots actually throttle back a bit. If I'd made this video a bit earlier, the noise would be even more intense. And yet, I don't think I've ever heard anyone make any complaints about the vibration from ships' engines affecting either the people who work on ships, who do so from, often for most of their lives, or the people who live on the shore. The vibration levels in this boat must be quite frankly way beyond, as in several orders of magnitude greater than any, not anything would ever come from a wind turbine, and yet I don't hear newspaper articles screaming and shouting about the damage done to people with, uh, from the vibrations of big ships that thunder up and down our inland and coastal waterways and the effects it might have both on the almost oh, nice seagull shop boat users and uh, boat workers, lorry drivers, tourists or uh, the folk who dwell on the water side if people are going to complain about wind turbines I think they really need to complain about you know, well, to be the honest there isn't a vibration problem from wind turbines you know, there is a large cynical anti-wind turbine industry that has a quite bluntly hidden agenda and that is they are, they are considered in a minority of us minority section of our society to be considered ugly and in order to impose the word on the rest of us they incessantly manufacture all manner of quite frankly dishonest rubbish concerning wind turbines designed simply to damage the core and they're not noisy, they're not inefficient, they don't consume more energy in their construction than they produce in their lifetime. In fact, they pay back the energy using them with, typically within the first six months of operation. As for the idea of the wind being in the intermittent, the power grid copes much better with the gentle ebb and flow of wind power than the sudden loss of a large power station, which can literally go offline in seconds. You know, the grid's well used to dealing with ups and downs of electricity. The only time wind power over dependence will be a problem is when we reach the continental level of wind power, which is beyond 20% of our national grid. At the moment, all we can achieve is a quite frankly pathetic 3%. And uh, with nine nuclear power stations worth of uh, wind power stuck in the pipeline, I think the time has come for uh, powerful new laws to bring in wind farms as a matter of emergency priority. We didn't win the last war by dilly-dallying on the construction of uh, barrage balloons, RAF bases uh, and radar installations in the countryside. And I think as we now fight the war on climate change, we need to go back to that. We need a ministry for wi uh, wind farms to impose the construction of these things on the, on the countryside as a matter of emergency. And uh, all the whinging self-interests are only interested in that. In that personal agendas of preserving property values I think need to be quite frankly overridden. I think there are actually a few turbines in this shop, there's a few turbines along here at Burton Head and uh, we quite frankly honest I don't think any, I've not, anyone's even noticed them. They are so unobtrusive in this particular landscape. Two wind turbines seen through the slightly steamed up window of the car ferry current moment in time, it's producing so much vibration that it's making the roof rattle and the floor wobble and the windows flex and the camera wobble. Look at the vibration on the camera, that's, that's the ship's engines doing now. There are ships 
ploughing up and down our waterways and inland, producing monumental quantities of vibration, and yet there doesn't appear to be any issues with the staff who work on them, passengers, tourists, or even the people who dwell on the seaside, like that tower block there. You know, the whole, whole dockside is covered in tower blocks. People have been living in those quite happily for years subjected to the thundering vibrations of huge boats and cargo ships and ferries and yet there's never I don't see articles in the newspaper by Nina Pierpoint and all the other people who are trying to uh, create the impression that wind turbines are somehow damaging uh, about ships and diesel locomotives and waves crashing onto the beach and all the thousands of other sources of low frequency vibration some man-made, some natural, such as the waves, potentially damaging our health. It is just not right that these people are being allowed to damage our uh, mind. Listen to that. Damage our future by incessantly manufacturing lies about noise, about vibration, about their supposed inefficiency. Wind turbines turn for average 80% of the time. The national grid can cope with a gentle ebb and flow of wind power far more easily than it comes to the sudden loss of a large power station. But the fact that wind power is somehow unreliable is ludicrous. All power stations are unreliable and need backup, and I know this because I work in one. Wind turbines pay back the energy used in their construction and manufacture of the materials used to build them within the first six months of operation and carry on to produce electricity for up to 25 or 30 years. The environmental payback of these things is absolutely phenomenal. These things need to be deployed and they need to be deployed in very large numbers. You know, okay, so we need thousands of them, but then we also need thousands of electricity pylons and telegraph poles to carry the power from the power stations. So the countryside impact will be about the same. You know, we'll borrow the countryside. And they don't last forever. They have to be either maintained or taken down in the same, in the same way that you can't fly an aeroplane forever without maintaining it or, or dismantling it. So their present ultimately will be temporary. You know, the technology will move on. We will find other cheaper ways of producing electricity using uh, what new, che uh, such as cheap solar energy. But at the moment, wind turbines represent the best solution to uh, low, uh, renewable, sustainable uh, way of living. We cannot carry on trashing the planet's resources in order to state our often quite frank, frankly mundane lifestyles without making some commitment to the future and without allowing the various assorted vested interests uh, to derail uh, the, our wind industry. We, have, we, have the, we are the windiest nation in Europe, yet we have a pathetic something like 3% penetration of wind power when much less windy nations are up to 20%, which is as much the grid could comfortably handle. Although new electricity storage technology such as the VRB flow system will make it possible for that to rise even further. Look at those things, aren't they elegant? You know, look, look just how elegant those things really are. You compare it to all the other junk that we stick in the countryside, you know, and you begin to realise that visual impact is the, you know, wind turbines are probably the most unoffensive construction that we can actually build. And as I say, mate, most people like them, 80-90% of people like them, and those who don't have been misled by the propaganda. Even quite intelligent people I know say things about wind turbines that I know to be blatantly untrue because they've read it in the paper. And it's been generated by various interests and get away with reducing this rubbish and imposing it on a thoroughly gullible public and getting away with it. Don't let these people steal our future. Don't let these people steal the, uh, the opportunity we have to create a truly sustainable way of life.